so unfortunately the ghoul of all ghouls nancy pelosi is releasing a book in the next couple of weeks and we got some excerpts from this book that have come out that are really just a perfect confirmation in terms of how absolutely nobody should be buying or reading this book because her analysis of uh, the 2020 elections and the current state of the democratic party is uh, just as delusional and brain rotted of a neoliberal take as you could expect from somebody like nancy pelosi so here from business insider they say pelosi fumed that representatives aoc and pramila jayapal were competing for queen b of the left a new book says so this is not the primary thing that we're going to focus on here but let's go ahead and get into some of the details they say house speaker nancy pelosi privately blamed progressives for nearly costing democrats and the house majority in 2020 and later fumed that representatives pramila jayapal and aoc were competing for queen b of the left according to a forthcoming book. So I'm not exactly sure exactly what she means by competing for Queen B. I mean, you have, you know, Pramila Jayapal, the leader of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, who, in my opinion, at least, has not been even remotely close to as aggressive enough as she could be uh, from that position. And then you have somebody like AOC, who's, you know, maybe marginally to her left, but pretty much in line with her in policy. And I haven't really seen any public fights between them or uh, even like heard of private fights between them behind the scenes. So not exactly sure what she means by competing for Queen B of the left. Uh, but that's what she had to say about that. Now, the primary thing I want to focus on here is her analysis of the 2020 elections and Democrats' underperformance in the 2020 election. So she's privately blaming progressives for that fault. So let's go ahead and continue with some of the details. They say, Democrats were expected to maintain and possibly even expand their majority in the U.S. House of Representatives in 2020, given President Trump's unpopularity. So first of all, notice how they frame this, which is exactly how Democrats were framing this in 2020, especially the so-called moderates or centrist, really the corporate Democrats were framing this entire election. Instead of running on some of the most popular policies that uh, were in play at the time, things that were floated by you know candidates like Bernie Sanders, like Medicare for All, or any uh, number of other things, a $15 minimum wage, any of the actual substantive policy issues that Democrats could have been running on, they thought they were just going to coast to an overwhelming victory purely off the back of Donald Trump's unpopularity. So this strategy is precisely why Democrats underperformed in 2020. And if you go and you look at the data, I mean, it wasn't progressives who were underperforming in this election. As you can see here from uh, Common Dreams, just as a reminder, every single one, Ocasio-Cortez notes that every Democrat who backed Medicare for All won their re-election in 2020. So in other words, if you back some of the most popular policies in the country, you're much more likely to be secured in your seat or to win election. Really, politics, not that complicated. But if you try to make your entire strategy purely hoping that people are just going to see how crazy the other guy is and that they're going to be motivated to show up for you in numbers, then that's not going to be an effective strategy because you aren't offering people uh, direct material improvements to their lives. You're just saying, I'm not as bad as the other guy, which again is pretty much the largest re reason why uh, not only Democrats, but also Joe Biden specifically underperformed against Donald Trump. But they continue saying, instead, they lost a dozen House seats on net, nearly losing their majority in the chamber, and some of the districts Democrats lost in places like South Florida and Southern California included high concentrations of Latino and Asian immigrants, a warning sign for Democrats' electoral prospects. So I would like to see some specifics on this, because I would bet a lot of money that the candidates specifically that they're talking about from South Florida and Southern, Car uh, Southern California are candidates who would have been uh, put forward by somebody like Nancy Pelosi as the so-called moderates or the so-called you know centrist candidates so it's like that's the platform they were running on and that's the platform you think they should have run on to have a likelier chance of winning that election and they failed so how are you going to turn this around and blame progressives for the failures of corporate democrats who lost their elections it's just you know completely delusional but they say, quote, in a few strictly confidential conversations, she pointed a finger leftward, the authors, the authors wrote. Pelosi told one senior lawmaker that Democrats had alienated Asian and Hispanic immigrants with loose talk of socialism. And in some of the same communities, the Italian Catholic speaker sp said, I don't know why the fuck they decided to include this in as a detail here, of Nancy Pelosi being an Italian Catholic speaker, but whatever. In some, in some of the same communities, the Italian Catholic speaker said Democrats had not been careful enough about the way they spoke about abortion among uh, new Americans who were devout people of faith. So the abortion question, sure, the rhetoric that you're talking about that, that could be a separate conversation. But per portraying this as if Democrats were talking too much about socialism, who was even talking about socialism? Who was actually a socialist running in 2020? There was almost no socialist candidates whatsoever. Maybe there were, you know, mildly like democratic socialists, like somebody like Bernie Sanders. Uh, but th those these people are not actual socialist candidates. You're just feeding into the Republican attacks uh, of, uh, you know, Democrats being 
being these big, bad, scary socialists, which, again, they apply as a label to even people like, you know, Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden uh, uh, themselves. So it's like this is not a charge that actually exists in reality. It's not as if Democrats as a party or even individual uh, progressive leftist Democrats were running as open socialists. They weren't even doing that. So it's just it's a complete made up issue that doesn't actually exist. But you'll notice here that they focus especially in with the Hispanic immigrants pointing out that it's in South Florida closely, you know, to, towards Cuba, uh, that they're talking about these regions here that are very anti-socialist in their perspective. So sure, there's probably a lot of places in South Florida where there's a heavy anti-socialist uh, sentiment there from people who uh, fled the uh, Castro, uh, the Castro uh, revolution in Cuba. Sure, that might be the case, but those are very far right Hispanics. And if you actually go and look at the, uh, the, the consistency across the entire country, well, Bernie Sanders was by far the most popular 2020 candidate among Hispanic voters. So across the board, Bernie Sanders and his policy agenda, the left-wing scary socialist policy agenda, was somehow the most popular among Hispanics, and yet they're still blaming the left and the left's policy agenda for, what, being too scary for the Hispanic community? It's just, it's completely delusional unless you only hyperfixate, which is what they always do, on this specific community that exists within South Florida of, uh, again, those, you know, with uh, Cuban heritage down there. But they continue saying, and this is where it gets even more frustrating because they do an analysis here of what happened with Build Back Better, but they say, in the fall of 2021, congressional Democrats tried to pass both components of President Joe Biden's economic agenda in the bipartisan infrastructure bill focusing on roads, bridges, green energy, not really, uh, and transportation, and a much pricier economic spending package including child care, social programs, and climate spending that uh, known as the Build Back Better agenda that Senate Democrats would pass along party lines. So first of all, again, I love how they fucking frame this in Business Insider, you know, talking about the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which was completely inadequate, uh, according to all of the major, you know, American Society of Civil Engineers and other uh, sources that actually understand the, uh, you know, collapsing nature of our infrastructure in this country. It was completely inadequate to tackle the problem of rebuilding our infrastructure. And, and of course, they, they tout that as if it's the, the reasonable alternative to build back better, which is this, you know, pricier economic spending package, which would have included things like, you know, free community college, the extension of the child tax credit credit, etc. All of the most popular policies uh, within the country. So again, love the way that they frame this, but th these failed to get passed, okay? The bipartisan infrastructure uh, framework got extremely watered down and then it got passed. Build Back Better, as of right now, is completely dead. So how do they analyze this entire situation? They say, moving both measures at the same time proved to be an immense challenge, with progressives withholding their support for the infrastructure pa package in protest of what they saw as a lack of commitment to Build Back Better from centrists. So just as a reminder here, just to recap you guys on the very basics of what happened, okay? Even Nancy Pelosi agreed initially to the strategy of passing Build Back Better and the bipartisan infrastructure package at the same time. That was the goal. Even Joe Biden came out and directly said, I want both of these things to be on my desk at the same time. That was the plan that was initially agreed upon. Now, was it then progressives who stood in the way of that plan as they're trying to frame it in this in this article here from Business Insider? No, it wasn't progressives. Progressives were literally 100% lockstep in line with Joe Biden's entire agenda. That's what the situation was. It was corporate Democrats like Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin and Josh Gottenheimer in the House who were putting up a fucking fuss this entire time and throwing a little pissy fit at things like, you know, uh, taxes on billionaires and, you know, extending the child tax credit, which Manchin said was going to be uh, used by parents on drugs instead of on their kids. Like, these were the types of things that were actually causing Build Back Better and the bipartisan infrastructure framework to get held up. It was corporate Democrats who were blocking Build Back Better and who refused to vote for Build Back Better at the same time as the bipartisan infrastructure framework. And yet, both Nancy Pelosi and the entirety of corporate media are still blaming progressives for withholding their support of the package. The whole point of them withholding their support of the package was to get the other package passed. That's the whole point of it. It was to make sure that Biden's agenda was actually going to get passed in its entirety. And yet, of course, this is how they frame it. But they say Pelosi, who famously only brings bills to the floor when she knows that she has the votes to pass them, had to cancel the two planned votes for the infrastructure bill on September 30th and again on October 29th. And they say, despite the holdups and intra-party squabbling, Pelosi got the necessary votes to pass the bipartisan infrastructure law on November 5th, with 13 Republicans voting in favor of the legislation, but she was still miffed at top progressives, who she blamed for at least temporarily derailing the bill's package. So listen, the, the bill's passage. So listen, at the end of the day, 
how this could have gone down if Nancy Pelosi, if Joe Biden had any spine whatsoever existing, um, what, 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 how this could have played out is they could have gone to Joe Manchin, Kirsten Cinema, used the carrot and stick approach and either threaten them uh, or uh, try to beat them into submission or uh, try to offer them things for their specific states in West Virginia and Arizona. They could have done so many different things to try to force the uh, Democratic members, the corporate Democrats within their own party that were blocking Biden's agenda in order to get them to vote for both of these things at the same time. But instead of doing that, they decided to completely get rid of the initial plan of passing them at the same time and go one by one. And what do you know? Now Build Back Better is entirely dead. And they blame this entire situation on progressives who were literally using the only viable strategy that was uh, possible at their disposal in order to try to guarantee that both of these would get passed at the same time. And now the situation that you have for Democrats is they are currently on track to get completely obliterated in 2022 by Republicans, not because progressives like scared off Hispanic voters with their scary talks of socialism, but because Democrats have completely failed to actually pass and enact the policies that Joe Biden ran on that could have economically, materially improved the lives of average Americans. That's the actual reality right here. And it's the reality that they completely, you know, refuse to accept at any level. And, uh, you know, this is this is how 2022 is going to play out. OK, just in case you guys were expecting something different where progressives would be given any credit whatsoever in good faith negotiations throughout this entire process. This is the lesson. OK, 2022 Democrats are going to get absolutely absolutely curb stomped by Republicans, and they're going to turn around and say that it was because of defund the police or because of scary socialist rhetoric from the left, when the reality of this situation is, again, it's because corporate Democrats are blocking not only the scary leftist socialist agenda, but they're blocking Joe Biden's agenda, okay? The same Joe Biden who, during the 2020 Democratic primary, they told us was the reasonable centrist alternative to Bernie Sanders, who was going to be able to get his entire agenda passed by working with Republicans, okay? It was a completely delusional strategy from the start and you can go check my videos back from 2020. I was telling you guys that this is exactly how this shit was going to play out. It's not that hard to figure out that Republicans are not going to be acting in good faith, that corporate Democrats are not going to be acting in good faith when it comes to legislation that would actually benefit the working class here in the United States uh, or anything really that doesn't benefit weapons manufacturers or corporate America. This was always going to be the reality and it wasn't that difficult to see. And yet we're still going to end up with, with a situation where it's the left that's getting blamed for all of these failures that are so very glaringly uh, obviously in the hands or at the hands of corporate Democrats.